Number 8. Steve Palmer In 2020, a man from Birmingham, England, contracted flesh-eating bacteria while gardening and nearly lost his hand. 34-year-old Steve Palmer had been clearing flood damage from his garden with the help of his wife and two young sons. He suffered a small scratch to his hand, which he didn't think much of at first. By the following morning, however, he was no longer able to move his finger and, later in the day, suffered throbbing pains and a fever. He'd contracted necrotizing fasciitis, a rare bacterial infection with a high mortality rate that eats away at flesh and progresses very quickly. 24 hours after the initial scratch, Palmer was experiencing what he described as the worst pain he'd ever felt, as the flesh on the back of his hand had begun to rot away. He was transported for specialist care at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, where doctors were successful in stopping the infection from spreading. Palmer was in surgery for nearly five hours as staff worked to clear the dead tissue in an effort to save his hand. They subsequently started reconstructing it by grafting flesh from further up the arm. Palmer was quoted as saying, I can't believe something like this could happen from gardening and in the aftermath, urged others to wear gardening gloves and clean every injury, no matter how small. Number 7. Vesna Chernobinya In November of 2014, 48-year-old Vesna Chernobinya and her husband Zoran were gardening at their home in Kasula in Sydney's southwest. A neighbor reported that a heated argument had broken out between the two. Then the neighbor heard Vesna scream and afterwards saw her lying motionless on the ground with Zoran standing near her body. It would later be revealed that the 52-year-old had strangled his wife to death. Zoran then drove off and used Vesna's cell phone to call their son, reportedly telling him, Alex, I've killed your mum. He was arrested upon his return to the residence. He had scratches to his hands, shoulders, neck and face, which Vesna had inflicted as she fought for her life. According to the police, they'd been called to their Flame Tree Street home prior to the incident. It was later determined that the argument had been about Zoran's mental health, with reports indicating he'd been admitted to a number of facilities in the past. A physical struggle ensued and Vesna desperately tried to get away from her husband. By Zoran's recollection of the events, he caught her and they started to fight, at which point he just jumped her. He claimed that he couldn't remember much beyond that point. He was ultimately found not guilty of killing his wife by reason of mental illness and was scheduled for psychiatric evaluation, which would establish when he'd be fit for release. Number 6. Teresa Edwards In July of 2016, a woman from West Sussex, England suffered a gruesome accident while gardening alongside her husband. 59-year-old Teresa Edwards was using a lawnmower to cut thigh-high grass. She reached down to unclog the machine but accidentally placed her hand between the box and the blade. The lawnmower severed off three of her fingertips. The shock initially prevented her from feeling any pain. And as she removed her gardening glove, Edward saw blood gushing from her open wounds. To stop the blood from pumping into her fingers, she raised her arm in the air above the heart level. Her husband started looking for the severed tips as they waited for the ambulance. One was recovered from the grass while the other two were found by paramedics in the lawnmower's box. Edwards was rushed to the trauma unit of the Queen Victoria Hospital in East Grinstead. While there, she was given a choice of amputation or of having the fingertips reattached. The cuts that the lawnmower blade had inflicted weren't clean, which is why a reattachment only had a 50% chance of success. It would involve a 15-hour surgery, a recovery period of at least a year, and having leeches attached to her fingers that would drain the blood so that she could regain movement. Amputation, which Edwards ultimately opted for, could be performed the following day under a local anesthetic and with a much shorter rehab period. In the months following the amputation, Edwards suffered from pain in addition to depression and anxiety as she constantly relived the moment of her life-changing injury. Number 5. Sue Bramley in October of 2013, detectives arrived at the home of Sue Bramley in Mansfield, Nottinghamshire, asking permission to dig up her garden, claiming an incident had occurred. Bramley had moved into the home eight years prior, and the garden was one of her favorite things about it. On one patch of land, however, grass wouldn't grow, and the woman turned it into a bed for her teenage daughter to plant flowers. 
it was that area of the garden where police dogs first headed as they were brought on the premises. The authorities also used a digger and, by the end of the day, a horrific truth emerged. Inside a shallow grave, they found the bodies of former owners Patricia and William Witcherly. The elderly couple had been gunned down in 1998 by their daughter, Susan, and her husband, Christopher Edwards. On the day of the double murder, neighbors would report seeing Christopher up to his waist digging in the garden. The bodies were wrapped in duvets and dumped in the grave. For 15 years, the killers made it seem that the Witcherleys were still alive, forging letters and documents so that they could collect their pensions. The couple stole nearly 300,000 pounds from their victims but didn't have a lavish lifestyle, spending most of the money on movie memorabilia and authenticated autographs of celebrities they admired. They regularly traveled to the house to maintain the garden, presumably concerned that someone would uncover their crimes but eventually sold it. Susan and Christopher turned themselves in after fleeing to France and amassing considerable debt and were each sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 25 years served. In spite of the garden's dark history, Bramley and her daughter were determined not to move. Number 4. John Claiborne In April of 2021, Australian TV director John Claiborne died in a freak gardening accident at his home in Attamon on Sydney's North Shore. 52-year-old Claiborne had over three decades' experience in television and was known for his work on popular series Home and Away and Underbelly. When the incident occurred, he was using a cordless power saw to trim the hedges in his garden. His wife, Melissa, was in the kitchen when she heard a branch breaking and rushed outside. She found Claiborne crawling on his stomach and clutching his torso, with blood gushing from his hand. He'd somehow cut into his hand with the power tool and then plummeted nearly 10 feet from the ladder. Ambulances arrived at his home and rushed Claiborne to Royal North Shore Hospital, where he passed away after going into cardiac arrest from severe blood loss. He was survived by his wife and two sons. Number 3. Elam Bador In August of 2021, an elderly Cleveland woman nearly lost her life after being caught in the crossfire during a drive-by and a shootout in the neighborhood of Cadell. At the time, 74-year-old Ellen Bador was picking weeds from the garden in her front yard. Witnesses reported that, at around 2 p.m., a car pulled up on a group that was playing basketball in the street. The occupants of the vehicle started shooting at them and the basketball players returned fire. A 19-year-old man was shot in the street while two people in the car, also reported as being in their late teens, also sustained gunshot injuries. None of those involved in the shootout have been named and their condition is unclear. The police offered a $5,000 reward in the aftermath for information that would lead to their prosecution. Bador was taken to the hospital in critical condition after being shot in the hand and abdomen. Family members reported that she needed to have part of her colon and intestine surgically removed. According to the latest updates on the case, medical staff had managed to stabilize her. Today's topic was requested by Frogana, DM Sour Kush, and Miss Pocket. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Lucinda Smith In March of 2015, a mother of two from England died after scratching the back of her hand while gardening and developing a dangerous infection. A few days after the minor scrape, 43-year-old Lucinda Smith complained of a pain in her shoulder and went to see a GP. The medical specialist didn't check her blood pressure or test her blood and sent Smith away with a prescription for an antidepressant to relax her muscles and help her sleep. After diagnosing her with a trapped nerve, the woman's condition continued to deteriorate over the next few days as she was in greater pain with her fingers and arm becoming red and swollen. Smith was eventually admitted to the emergency room at Basildon Hospital. It was there that within 30 minutes a simple blood test revealed she had contracted sepsis and doctors immediately started treating her with intravenous antibiotics. Sepsis, a potentially deadly condition, is the body's extreme immune response while trying to fight off an infection, which can reduce the supply of blood to other organs. Had it been detected earlier, Smith would have likely survived. As her organs ceased functioning properly, she succumbed to cardiovascular, renal, and respiratory failure, 
five days after injuring her hand in the garden. Number one, Christopher K. In 2020, a man from Carlin Howe in North Yorkshire, England, was fatally shot with an air rifle while tending to his garden. 58-year-old Christopher Kay, described as a dearly loved grandfather by his family, had gone to a hospital appointment and then had lunch with a friend before returning home on August the 21st. Jamie Hellings, a man in his early 30s, was severely intoxicated as he was traveling in a car with two friends. Kay was in front of his house working in the garden which was concealed by a large hedge. When Hellings fired the air rifle, out of the car window. The pellet struck Kay in the chest. He called an ambulance and told the operator he'd been shot. Kay was tended to by his neighbors, but by the time he was transported to a Middlesbrough hospital, went into cardiac arrest. Kay passed away and Hellings, after realizing he'd been responsible for the incident, surrendered to the authorities. He claimed that he'd never meant to fire the rifle and that it had accidentally discharged while he was handling it. He pled guilty to manslaughter and was jailed for six years and eight months. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get run over by a lawnmower or by a steamroller? Let us know in the comments section below.